Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mitch here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm sharing with you guys five of my productivity hacks to make you a faster and more efficient editor in Premiere Pro. One of the most common misconceptions with filmmaking is that most of the time and effort associated with the project goes in in the planning and the shooting phase of that project. But what you quickly come to realize once you start making films is that often the majority of the time that you spend on a single project is spent right here in front of the computer in the post-production editing phase. I do really believe that this is an incredibly important part of each and every project and you should be spending a lot of time in the editing phase. But there are some things that you can do to make this whole process a little bit smoother, to get your creative vision out into the world faster. All right guys, so jumping into Premiere Pro, got my camera set up on the table here, I'm recording my screen so you guys can see exactly what's going on. And the first hack that I've got for you guys is using clip labels. So you can see I've got a new project here and I've pretty much gone through and I've clipped out all of my rushes or all of my B-roll, all the shots that I plan on using to create this edit. So you can see that I've separated them with a little bit of blank space, but what I've also done is I've recolored the clips. And that's what I'm talking about here with the clip label. So what a clip label is, is actually just the color of the clip and how it appears on the timeline. So you can see I've got a scene here of my talent who's at a cafe, some various clips here, they're all colored blue. And then I've got some shots here of him walking along the beach. They're all colored purple. I've got some drone shots here, which are colored orange. So there you can see those. And so basically what it does is it allows me to see the clips like a visual representation of what part of the shoot these clips are from. So I can easily in my edit find them, find where they are, and also just by looking at my timeline know what clips I'm actually scrubbing over. So to show you guys how to do this, I've got a bunch of clips here and you will notice that they are the default blue color that you would be used to um, if you're using Premiere Pro and how you change the label or the color is you just select them all, uh, right click, go to label here and change those to whichever color you like. I'm going to make them pink and there you go, all the clips are pink. So guys, just to give you a more practical example, I've actually pulled up another project. So this is my last YouTube video about how I focus on a gimbal. If you haven't seen that one, I'll leave a link in the description below. But this is just to illustrate that when I've got my project loaded up here, I can easily see I've colored my A-roll green. I can see that here on the timeline as I scrub through. And then I've colored my B-roll purple. So you can easily see where your clips are, what kind of clips they are, um, even if they're on the same layer in the timeline. So it really helps to kind of like visually gauge as you're working. My second hack for becoming a more efficient Premiere Pro editor is using custom bins for your effects. So basically, if you can see my effects panel here on the left hand side, I've got all the standard uh, bins that you would see as a default in Premiere Pro presets, uh, I've got the audio effects, um, the video effects, as well as the transitions. But then you'll notice here that I've got a bunch of other bins and the first one I've labeled favorites. And inside that bin, we've got all of the effects that I use almost on every single project, I'll be using one of these effects. So this tip is to uh, identify and find the, um, the effects that you use most often and just drag those into a new bin. So how you do that, I'm just gonna create a new bin here. This little button down the bottom, create a new custom bin, will actually allow you to uh, create that. And then you've got this um, custom bin now, we can rename that, let's make it um, uh, effects I use all the time. Uh, once we've created that, now we can find an effect, let's just say it's a sharpen, um, and then we're going to drag this down into the effects I use all the time folder that I just created. And then you'll see that it is in there, um, and we can drag that onto our clip. I just have this favorites box open pretty much the whole time. Um, one effect that I use a lot is warp stabilizer, and it's great just to have that sitting there on the left hand side at all times. My third tip is using custom effect presets. And basically when you use an effect and you apply it to a clip and then you play around with the parameters of that, let's say um, you're doing a color grade, so it's a Lumetri layer. 
um, you're adjusting the black, the highlight shadow, um, you can actually save that as a preset uh, within the effects panel. So I'll show you how to do that. So uh, we've got a clip here which doesn't have a grade applied to it. Um, and what we're gonna do here is we're just going to make some adjustments. So I'll increase the contrast. Uh, pull down the highlights, uh, add some saturation. And then we might go into the creative tab, add some sharpening. And I'll just choose one of these default lookup tables, reduce the opacity. Okay, so once we've done that now, we'll go back to our effects panel. You can see here that we've got a Lumetri layer on there. If I toggle that on and off, you can see the difference that it makes to the clip. But what I'm actually talking about is creating uh, this as a custom effect preset. So how we do that is we right click and then hit save preset. Now we can call this whatever we want. We could call it a uh, skateboarder grade. And then that effect preset is going to get filed away into this preset folder you can see here. So we've got a whole bunch of other ones that I've already created, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, but there's our skateboarder grade. And if we wanted to say, apply this grade again. So let me go over here. I've got another shot of the same skateboarder going in the opposite direction. This also has no effects applied. I'm gonna drag the skateboarder grade on there. And then you can see we've got two identical grades. And then that color grade preset is basically there forever. No matter what project you're in, you're going to have that as a preset in your Premiere Pro effects panel. So I've actually taken this to another level in that I've got a number of custom bins set up in Premiere that house all the different categories of custom effect presets that I'm using. So you can see here under the favorites, I've got Road Video Micro, Color Grades, Tascam, F-Log, Turek 709, Crop Bars, and I've actually got a whole bunch of different effect settings here. So just to show you, I've got a crop effect and it's already got the parameters for a 2.39 to one aspect ratio. I dropped that on my clip. It pretty much applies those settings. A 1.85 to one applies the settings. And then I've also got a folder full of color grades here. So these are the two main color grades that I use for most of my projects. If I drag one of those over onto this skateboarder, you can see that it applies that grade. And because I use the Rode Video Micro for a lot of my projects, I've got a folder here called Rode Video Micro with three different uh, custom effect presets saved in there. And I basically just copy all three of these and I drag it onto my audio layer. And that just really quickly improves the quality of the sound, does some EQ and some compressing uh, to the audio signal. So these custom presets, and especially when you're categorizing them into bins, make your editing process so much quicker because there will be things from each project that um, differ, you know, from project to project. But for the most part, um, a lot of the time you'll be using the same effects with the same presets over and over again. And this is just a really easy tip that you can use to make your process a lot quicker. So my fourth tip for you guys today is using hotkeys. And what that is, is instead of using your mouse, um, you can use the keys on your keyboard uh, for certain commands within Premiere Pro. Um, so Premiere Pro comes with a whole bunch of default hotkeys. One of them that I use a lot and I really like is Shift D. So using Shift D will allow you to automatically um, put a fade in and fade out on audio clips, just like I'm doing here. And then also on video clips, so you can put a dissolve in and a dissolve out, which I use quite often. Another one is, you know, if you need to level your audio, pressing the G key will actually bring up this audio gain um, dialog box. And then you can just set your gain really easily. So if you're going through and editing a whole bunch of different audio, it's captured from different cameras at different times during the day and you need to level them all out using the G key is really fast. You can actually create custom hotkeys, which I've done, and I won't go through all of them. I'll just give you one example. Um, so when you're working with different size resolutions on the same timeline, if you're mixing 1080p and 4K footage, you do need to sometimes nest your clips if they're the wrong frame size to apply an effect like warp stabilizer. So to nest your clips, you have to right click on the clip if I get it right here. Um, Wow, okay. Um, and then choose this nest function and then hit okay. 
So if I just undo that now, I've actually got a hotkey set up for the end key. So if I just hit the end key and then press enter, you see how quick that was, I nested the clip. If you're editing for like three or four days straight and you're nesting clips over and over and over again, these little things can really add up. So in order to create a custom hotkey, you just go up to the um, Premiere Pro menu up here, go down to keyboard shortcuts, uh, use this little um, search bar here, type in the function that you're looking for. In this case, it's nest and you can see um, I've got the shortcut N. Uh, so you just want to change that to whichever you want. Just make sure you don't overwrite something else that's really important to you um, and then click OK and that's pretty much it. My fifth and final Premiere Pro editing hack is using custom export presets. Um, and this actually comes in at the end of your project when you finish editing. So let's just pretend that I'm finished this sequence and I'm ready to export. I'll go up to File, Export Media, uh, choose my format which is going to be H.264 for the most part. Um, and then default in Premiere Pro, you get all of these different export settings. Now if you're an advanced user and you do have different settings that you use that aren't really covered um, in these uh, default settings, you can create custom export presets. So as you can see here, I've got a couple of custom presets that I've set up for myself. I've got a 4K YouTube preset, uh, H.264 with a high bit rate, one with a low bit rate. And then if I come over here and I choose a different format, so let's try QuickTime, I have some ProRes presets that I've set up here as well. So in order to create a new preset, basically we choose our format um, and then we go down through our settings. So if we want to make this uh, 4K, we can do that. So 3840 by 2160. And then we want to do, let's say, two pass encoding with a 35 megabit bit rate. Now we can actually save this preset. So you want to come up to this button here, save preset. Um, and then we're just going to call it um, 4K preset hit OK and then that shows up in our custom preset menu right here at the top. So for a long time my custom export presets were saved up here in my head and then I'll go through every single time I finish a video and fill out all these boxes until I figured out that you could just save a custom preset. So it does save a little bit of time but what I found um, that it really does help with is that if you finish a video and you want to output multiple formats using the Q function to send these multiple formats to Media Encoder, and then going through the process of exporting those different versions is just a matter of selecting all your different presets. So if I wanna output four versions of the same video all at different bit rates for different purposes, I can easily do that. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, if you got something out of it, if you learned something, leave a like down below. Drop me a comment if you've got any questions. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thanks very much once again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.